formula mass. We talked about a couple of different masses so far. We talked about atomic mass, the mass of an atom. We talked about molar mass, the mass of a mole. The formula mass is the mass of a formula unit. So it could be an individual molecule or an individual formula unit. Now that we've learned about nomenclature, we've learned you know, that things combine into molecules, or for ionic compounds, we call them a formula unit. This is also known sometimes as a molecular mass, the mass of a molecule, sometimes still called molecular weight. That's um, an older term we're trying to get away from. To figure out the formula mass, we're just going to add up the masses of all the atoms in a single molecule or formula unit, because the mass of the whole is the sum of the parts. So in a general form, we've got the number of atoms of the first element in the formula times the mass of the first element, plus the number of elements, the second element, times its mass. And you just add them up like that, and that'll give you the mass of the formula. So let's calculate the formula mass of calcium nitrate. They didn't give us the formula. They're going to make us write the formula. What kind of a compound is calcium nitrate? Uh, type one. Ionic. It is type 1. So ionic compound, to get the formula, we need to look at the formula with charge for the calcium and the formula with charge for the nitrate. So calcium is Ca, and what's the charge? 2 plus, because it's in group 2. Nitrate, NO3 minus. Why? Because, right? I'm really good at saying because because I have a lot of children, and they ask so many questions. <clears throat> How do we put these two together? And this is another question that came up on the one-minute paper. How do we do the crisscross thing? If you can put the, the charges together and get the, the total to be zero without doing crisscross, go ahead and do it. The crisscross is for the more math-challenged people or for people who just don't want to think about numbers as much. So if we're doing crisscross, we're going to take this 2 and bring it down here. The unwritten 1 comes down there. So I've got calcium with the unwritten 1. I've got nitrate. Um, because I'm going to have two of them, I have to put parentheses around it. And there's my formula. This is a good time to ask questions if this part of ionic nomenclature isn't making sense. Everybody OK with how I got that formula? I need two of the negative one charges to balance this plus two charge. The compound has to be electrically neutral. The charges add up to zero. Now that I have the formula, I can calculate the formula mass. So how many calcium atoms are in the formula? One. What's the mass of one calcium atom? 40.078. One atom of calcium, 40.078 grams? Or atomic mass units? It's the mass of one atom. It's AMUs. How many nitrogens in the formula? Two nitrogens. So we have two of these bundle packs. Each bundle pack has one nitrogen. There are two nitrogens. We go to the periodic table again, 14.0067. Atomic mass units. How many oxygens? Six. Mass of oxygen, 15.9994 atomic mass units. Do not round those off to whole numbers. So I've got 40.078 plus 2 times 14.0067 plus 16 times 15.9994 equals. I'm getting 
seven eight atomic mass units. We do need to think about significant figures here. I think it's best to think in terms of addition. And so this has three decimal places, this has four, and that has four. So I'm going to say that the third decimal place is the last significant figure. When you're calculating with formula masses, it's best to not round them off until the end. Usually your formula mass is not going to limit the precision of your final answer. Usually it's the mass that you started out with. And and why you used um, AMUs instead of grams or what? That's a good question. Why did I use AMUs instead of grams? This is the formula mass. The mass of one formula unit. The formula unit is one calcium atom, two nitrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. It does not weigh 164 grams for one formula unit. A mole of formula units would be 164 grams. So with moles you use grams? Moles and grams, atoms, and atomic mass units. It's an important distinction. Most of the time, it, it doesn't really become a problem. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. um, why did I round it here? Because I'm adding, basically. There, there's different, you know, significant figures is not the most rigorous way of determining precision in calculations. It's just the simplest and the fastest. And so sometimes you can end up with some funky answers. Um, so I prefer in this situation to think that I'm taking one of these and I'm adding this twice and I'm adding that six times. So I'm just using the rule for adding. And so since this has three decimal places, my answer is going to have three decimal places. Okay. Use whichever periodic table you have in front of you. The one I give you on exams only has four sig figs. And so some of the numbers may have only one, one decimal place. But that's going to be OK. Just don't round them to whole numbers. Any other questions? So that's formula mass. Molar mass is what we use more often, and this is where we do the grams. So the molar mass of a compound is the mass in grams of one mole of molecules or formula units. It's the same number as the formula mass. It's just the unit's different. Just like one atom of carbon weighs 12 atomic mass units, one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. A dozen, chemist dozen weighs that amount in grams. So what's the molar mass of ammonia? What's the formula for ammonia? Remember? NH3. Ammonium is NH4+. Plus. So NH3, we have 1, 14.0067 grams, because really now we're, we've got one mole of nitrogen, and we've got three moles of hydrogen, 0.0795. I'm trying to be consistent and use the table behind me, but I think I'm going to revert to the one that I have memorized. 14.0067 plus 3 times 1.00795. 17.03055 grams. I would look at the nitrogen with the four decimal places, and I would say that this 5 is definitely my last significant figure. So we can say that one mole of ammonia is equal to 17.03055 grams. Or we can say 17.03055 grams per mole. 
Does that look like a conversion factor? Yes, it does. We use uh, molar mass as a conversion factor a lot in chemistry. That's not a 12. That's a 17. Any questions? This is how we would use molar mass to count molecules by weighing them. We talked about counting atoms by weighing. We need the molar mass to count molecules. So the overall plan here is that we start with grams, the mass. We can weigh things out on the balances. It's very convenient. We cannot count atoms. We can convert grams of substance A to moles using the molar mass. And then we can go from moles to molecules using, using Avogadro's number. Because there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole. And that works for anything, just like a dozen is 12, anything. Questions? My question is, why did I leave off the second two in Avogadro's number? Don't know why. OK, so let's do a problem. Find the number of ibuprofen molecules. <laughs> There's another typo. In a table containing 200 milligrams. Why would a table have ibuprofen in it? <laughs> I think that's supposed to be tablet. A tablet. There we go. A tablet, a pill, containing 200.0 milligrams of ibuprofen, and they're giving us the formula. If you were forced to choose, what kind of a compound would you say that ibuprofen was? Ionic, molecular, or acid? Molecular. molecular. It's got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It is a molecular compound. It has molecules. We're not learning how to name that because it's an organic compound. And that's a whole other can of worms that you'll get into in your second year of chemistry called organic chemistry. So these come down to being dimensional analysis problems. So there's only one number in this problem, so that's probably where we're going to start. 200 milligrams of ibuprofen, and what do they want us to find? Number of molecules. So we have to figure out how to convert milligrams to molecules. We could go from milligrams to grams. And then we just learned how to go from grams to moles. And moles to molecules or formula units or atoms should be review. Any questions about the path? If you're not getting questions like this correct when you do them on the study questions or on Mastering Chemistry, make sure that you're actually writing the path out. A lot of people are asking me and they're showing me their work and I'm seeing, hey, you didn't write the path. Write the path. It's so much easier if you have a written map. Then when you, you know, lose your focus, you can look at the map and it just tells you where to go and you don't have to start over. So here's my path. I have three arrows. I'm going to have three conversion factors. 200.0 milligrams times in a line, times in a line, times in a line. Milligrams to grams to moles to molecules. Milligrams to grams to moles to molecules. I think it's unfair that there's not an abbreviation for molecules. I have the units on the top. I'm going to put the units in the bottom so they cancel out. And then I'm going to look for numbers. You don't have to do the first term first. You can fill the numbers in whatever's easier. I prefer to start with easy one first, right? So I think this one's pretty easy, milligrams to grams. Milli means 10 to the minus 3. So we've got milli on the bottom. I write what it means on the other side of the line. So 10 to the minus 3. 1 times 10 to the minus 3 grams is equal to 1 milligram. 
This one's going to require a little work. I'm going to skip that one for now. Molecules and moles. Mole is the chemist's dozen. A dozen is 12 things. One mole is Avogadro's number of things. Mole on the bottom, Avogadro's number on top. Yeah, I keep accidentally pulling down this control tab. <laughs> Just let me write. Okay, where do we get that middle number? Formula mass. We've got the formula here. We're just going to have to calculate it. I'm going to use the four sig fig periodic chart that I have in my head. So there are 13 carbons. The mass of carbon is 12.01 grams. There are 18 hydrogens, 18 times 1.008. And there are two oxygens, and the four sig fig mass of oxygen is 16. 13 times 12.01 plus 18 times 1.008 plus 2 times 16 equals 206.274 grams is equal to 1 mole of ibuprofen. As a mom, ibuprofen is my remedy for everything. The kids come and say, I have a headache. Take some ibuprofen. I sprained my ankle. Take some ibuprofen. I got hit in the stomach with a bat at baseball practice. Take some ibuprofen. Solves everything. I really encourage you to write it down like this. I know you can just punch it into your calculator. But sometimes you make a mistake. And if you have it written down, you can go back and catch the mistake. I also recommend punching that through on your calculator twice. It's so easy to mispress buttons. Go for best two out of three if the first two answers aren't the same. Did anybody else get 206? So I'm going to consider two decimal places in my um, molar, or yeah, my molar mass here. So one mole is 206.274 grams. As I'm doing this, Multiplying and dividing, I'm starting with four significant figures. This one's exact. That one has five. This one has four. Generally, your molar mass is not going to limit your number of sig figs. And I didn't leave room for the answer, but we'll slide it in down here. So 200 times 1 EE minus 3 divided by 206.274 times 6.0. EE23. So 5, this should have 4 sig figs, 5.839 times 10 to the 20 molecules.